Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I'm here to talk about The Vampire Diaries, episode 810, titled Nostalgia's a Bitch, which premiered Friday, January 27th, 2017, on The CW. Guys, this is this was an amazing episode, so before we get right into it, huge spoiler alert. I'm going to try not to summarize like I used to in the past, but it's highly recommended that you watch the episode before you come see what I have to say about it. Um, so huge spoiler work for obvious reasons. Um, also, I have mentioned my video reminders beforehand this past season. So they're up on screen right now just to cut time short on me explaining it. So with all that said and done, let's start with the 10 minute clock and let's talk about what happened in this episode. So the episode title quote um, for this one, Nostalgia's a Bitch, comes from Damon it from episode 119 when he said it to Anna when they were at the Miss Mystic Falls pageant and she was reminiscing about um, what was supposed to happen in 1864. So timeline wise though guys this episode takes place the day after the uh, Miss Mystic Falls pageant so pretty much less than 24 hours um, since all that happened in the last episode happened um which makes sense uh so storyline wise though i picked up two different storylines happening in this episode first one i'm calling it um finding damon and second one is about the charter belt so dealing with story number one finding damon essentially is because he's dealing with the fact that sybil forced him to switch his humanity back on and he's taking refuge inside of his head so when damon and or not Damon, when Bonnie and Caroline go inside Damon's head, they find that he has created a world in his head where life had continued on as if he was not a vampire. So we see many familiar faces, people he thinks would have still been alive around that time if he hadn't intervened as a vampire. So there's that. But ultimately, Bonnie figures out that in order for Damon to awaken again, he has to talk to Stefan and get things sorted out between the two of them. Damon ultimately reveals that he has to be the... It's time for him to forgive Stefan for everything because ultimately Damon blames Stefan for turning into a vampire and then Stefan blames himself for doing that. So it's a whole big ball of forgiveness for um, this episode. The second storyline, though, deals with the Charter Bell. So we see Peter Maxwell welding all the pieces together to form the actual Witch's Bell. We actually learn as well from Celine that when a Maxwell rings the bell 12 times, it pretty much rips a hole straight out of like their universe or their plane of existence, and it leads them straight to Cade. So if you want to think of it this way, you had the other side, which still... Um, blanketed over um, the, the land of the living except no one from the land of the living saw them so pretty much you're ripping out that veil completely that would lead you to Cade. I don't know how else to explain it except for the fact that yeah I don't know anyways so pretty much when you ring the bell 12 times you pretty much destroy anything within the bell when the, within the chimes radius and that everything inside of it goes straight to Cade. Um, whether you're innocent or not, from the looks of it. So, Matt was compelled by Stefan to ring the bell at the top of the hour. He, Matt manages to ring it 11 times before he was knocked out by Damon, who stopped Peter from doing something he would regret later on, because he either had to incapacitate Matt by knocking him out, or he, he had to kill him to prevent him from um, the compulsion to go through. But, because the bell was rang 11 times, Cade was allowed to resurface in the flesh. And his first visit was to the Siren Sisters, who sat down to try to forgive each other, but they kept blaming each other. So, instead of having that hash out, Cade ended up killing them in a uh, flame of fire, from the looks of it. Tidbit-wise, though, guys, um, this episode also showed Damon's grave, showing that he was born in 1839. Confirming, at least for me, that Damon was 25 when he was turned into a vampire. I probably missed past indications for that, um, but this one was loud and clear for me. Also, we got Damon reciting his letter to Bonnie, which earned him a hug from her. Uh, we also got Stefan being locked up in the Salvatore cellar after Damon had killed him. Um, so that marks Stefan's third death as uh, a servant to Cade. Uh, we also see Matt taking steps towards being uh, Mystic Falls' next sheriff. And we also see Violet Fell being killed by Stefan for Cade after she killed a whole bunch of patrons inside the Mystic Girls. And she is, uh, she 
He's been a vampire for less than a day now. So moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode, I think it has to be the fact that Kid not only came back, but the fact that he killed the sirens like he did. It was just like a snap of his finger, and they were like done. They were burst into flames of fire. So that was that was surprising in itself. But let's move on to the top three favorite moments. A huge favorite moment for me has to be all the familiar faces we got to see inside Damon's head. So first off, in order of appearance, we got Henry, which is the um, soldier that Damon fought alongside during the Civil War when they were human, as well as Henry was also one of the two vampires. Uh, we saw him um, for a few episodes last season um, when dealing with um, Lily. Second person to appear was Vicki Donovan. Um, she was back doing the whole uh, waitressing gig back at the Mystic Grill, so we got to see her. Um, next was Liz Forbes, who was still sheriff of the town and tried to figure out who was the vampire that was killing uh, her victims. Those victims ending up being the same ones that were killed in the pilot episode, originally killed by Damon. Uh, but that, because of Liz, that ends up leading to a repeat of Caroline's torture, torture session, but enough of that. Uh, fourth one was Sheila Bennett, a.k.a. Grams, uh, that Benny, or that Bonnie, Benny, that Bonnie got to reunite with shortly, and she ended up doing her magic inside, um, Damon's head to locate Damon, leading Bonnie to his grave. And then we got Tyler Lockwood, who Bonnie ran into telling her not to go further, on this uh, mission to find and forgive Damon. So those are many familiar faces. Uh, I was kind of, I kind of hinted that maybe we'd see Vicky because of the fact that the promo showed her grave. Uh, And then later on, another promo showed a glimpse of Tyler. But the other three, I was not expecting. So I was very surprised and very happy to see just how much we were able to see of them. I didn't think we would get these long scenes with each of the characters. I thought it would just be like a glimpse look or like a, a line and that would be it. But we actually got a good chunk of their return, which I really like. So I'm happy for that. Next favorite moment me. What? I Okay, second <laughs> favorite moment. I can't talk right now. I'm so sorry. Um, is between Damon and Bonnie. Especially when Damon is reciting um, what he wrote to Bonnie. I really love that scene. It was great to see not only a, a, a Damon with his humanity back, but it was just a great. It was great to see them have the dynamic again because this was a dam- dynamic I've missed since before Damon decided to desiccate himself three years ago. Their time, um, and then they had the whole thing of Bonnie not forgiving him, and then they got a brief moment of her actually forgiving him, and then he was um, Sybil's slave. And so now they're back to being friends. And I really love the letter. I actually managed to find the clip and uh, write down Damon's letter. And it was, Dear Bonnie, I am a coward. I should be saying this to your face, not writing this letter. But I know if I do, you'll talk me out of running away from all my problems. So you're going to make me face the future without Elena. And you're going to help make me the best man that I could possibly be. Same way she did. And I'm absolutely terrified in failing you both. So I'm leaving. Because I'd rather let you down once than let you down for the rest of your life. And I hope it's the happiest life. Because you, Bonnie Bennett, are an amazing woman. A mediocre crossword player. And my best friend. With great love and respect, Damon. And then he apologized to her for leaving. And he says he's never going to leave again. And I really liked... It when he was reciting the letter to you when she's been insisting that she's not going to read it unless he tells her exactly what's in it. And then you see her just, she's holding back her tears, but they still fall. And it's just, in the end, they get, she hugs him. And it's just, I absolutely love that scene so much. Um, so I'm glad they finally have that. They definitely needed that. I think it's like th- three years in the making for sure. Um, my last favorite moment or my third favorite um, is the scene between Damon and Stefan inside Damon's head, where uh, Damon finally forgives Stefan, um, and Stefan just stunned by, "Is like you're forgiving me? It should be me who's forgiving you." And like they fight, but then Damon's like, "I still I forgive you. Uh, no matter what you do, I'll always forgive you. You're my brother and everything." Um, it's actually a quote for it. Yeah, Damon says, you're my brother and I love you and there is nothing you could ever do to change that. Absolutely love that quote. Absolutely love that Damon was saying it to Stefan. And for a moment, I thought that would have been the moment that um, Stefan 
flipped his switch back on. But then he turns around and says he's going to burn the town. But anyways, I'll ignore that part. But I really like that when... Even when Stefan was punching Damon out, and he he stopped immediately once he noticed that Damon wasn't healing like he was supposed to. So it 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 was very interesting to see this scene between the two brothers because Damon forgiving Stefan is something that has been brewing for the last hundred and so years for them ever since they were turned into vampires and the whole reason why that damon promised stefan an eternity and a misery was because that stefan forced him to turn into a vampire so or one of the reasons at least so to finally have damon forgive stefan like in this manner i it was surprising but i'm very glad it happened the way it did there's the timer so let's move on to top three peeves moments i really didn't have any peeves with this episode I really didn't. I actually, I really liked it from start to finish. I liked what was included. I liked how everything was connected and how it, it made sense why everything appeared the way they did. So I'll give it that. But what will I remember when I look back on this episode? The fact that we got inside Damon's head and that we got to see um, a lot, all those familiar faces. Those were fun to see. I was kind of hoping we'd see certain other ones, but it didn't work out that way. Uh, next, let's talk about random questions. I really only have the one, and I'm just left wondering if the Charter Bell, Witch's Bell, whatever you want to call it, can be used against Cade. I'm wondering if, since um, Celine confirmed that it'll kill a siren within its uh, chime radius, but what about Cade? If Cade was in the radius, would that affect him? The 11 times brought the or gave Cade the ability to come back in the flesh, but... Does it do anything else against him, or is it solely his weapon to use? But I guess we'll find out in the next episode. But moving on to predictions very quickly. Based off the promo for 811, it looks like Cade gives Damon an ultimatum, and that is to either he has one night to kill 100 evil strangers, or he kills the love of Stefan's life, which is Caroline. And then, of course, Caroline doesn't want anyone else to die, but Cade wants souls, so he doesn't really care which way uh, he's going to get some. From the looks of it. But based off the synopsis, it reads, Cade returns to Mystic Falls and prevents a da- or presents Damon and Stefan with additional assignments, each with unthinkable consequences. Even with tension growing in their friendship, Caroline and Matt do their best to protect the town's residents from Cade's appetite for her- their souls. Bonnie and Enzo hit the road on a romantic trip, taking the bell with them in hopes to keep it safe. Wonder what they're going to come across during their road trip. But um, aside from all that... Uh, with Cade back in town, there's no telling what he's going to do or how far he's going to go, but I guess we'll have to wait and see for that. We'll also be interesting to see how, uh, how, uh, an emotionless Stefan interacts with an emotion-filled Damon. Uh, we saw it, of course, in the previously, but we never saw them in the parameters of them both being Cade's servants, so we'll see that. But also, it was announced uh, just a few days ago that it has been confirmed that uh, Nina Dobrev is returning for the series finale, episode 816. Um, The cast is actually filming the finale um, this week, actually. So she actually posted on Instagram the photo of her official script. So I'm absolutely excited to see in just what capacity we're going to see Nina. I hope it's as Elena. But since she played so many different characters, who knows? She might be coming back as Catherine. She might do a flashback as Amara. She might even throw in some Tatia in there or something. But um, she might even do a future doppelganger for all we know. Um, but I really hope we at least see Elena and finally get her a- to wake up. Um, either in the future when Bonnie has lived out her full life or with the vampire loophole. If Bonnie ever becomes a vampire, maybe that works too. But I'm just super excited that we are going to get Nina Dover back for one final time. Um, So that's fantastic. Now I'm just waiting for Jeremy's appearance uh, in some way, shape, or form. So um, there's that. But that's all I want to say about the episode. What did you guys think of the episode? What did you like about it? What do you think is going to happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your own thoughts, theories, opinions, and all that stuff. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I read blogs, promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all that good stuff. But the TV shows I like and what uh, mainly about the ones I talk about as well. But if you want to find everything in one spot, follow me on Tumblr there because I'm pretty good at that um, when I'm up to date. 
Um, also, check out my WordPress account. The link for that is down below. It's also attached to my Tumblr page, attached to this channel. Um, so go follow me there. You got a whole bunch of links in that link as well. Also, if you want a detailed recap of what happened in the episode, play-by-play, -play, if you will, of what went down, it, you can check out my recap of it down below for, at my live journal account. Um, you get my in-moment thoughts as I watch the episode for the first time. So that's pretty interesting, too. Um, and that's about it. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you come back next week to hear what I have to say about the next episode. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wishing you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.